What's up, y'all? Good evening, and welcome to the Emerging Young Voices Film Festival, brought to you by 4421. We ask that you please be quiet and courteous to others and silence those damn phones. But we also want to encourage y'all to take some photos and videos to post on social media and tag 4421. That's at 4421.co. Now sit back and enjoy the show. My name is Amarachin Wosu. I'm a 26-year-old visual artist, filmmaker, and director from Washington, D.C. I am so excited to show you my film, Rise and Light. This film helped raise $11,000 last year for COVID relief in Nigeria and supported over 300 families in Makoko. I hope this film shows that it is possible to support social relief through creativity and also push creative boundaries, and I hope you guys enjoy Here's what made me suppress my life and succumb to my lower nature. Here's a choice. What did I do? Baby, it's what you said. What did I say? Go to sleep, go to bed. Where would I go? If I wake up, you ain't there. If you really love me, you should think about letting me know. I love you. I love you. call a foreign place my home, to feel the energy of my ancestors in a place I have never been, to see my reflection in a culture that is both new to me and so familiar, to leave and to find my way back, a destiny no one can take from me, a destiny that has been written before my first breath, a space of endless energy, joy, beauty, peace, 
sadness, anxiety, trauma, and everything in between. But isn't that life and everything it encompasses? While I know the trauma of my history, I want to explore the joy. The world isn't perfect, but I still choose to pass down joy and freedom to a generation instead of the trauma of our past. Choosing love instead of fear is a risk, but truthfully, it's a risk we have to take. To leave and to find our way back. To see a home in a foreign place. Shadogiri, majere ye buwo, majere buwo. Jede ru, eh, rubiba, tere botu ofene ye. Hi, my name is Ashton. I am an illustrator and animator currently living in Los Angeles, California. I'm also a grad student at UCLA's Animation Workshop, and tonight you will be viewing my film that I made for the program titled Cayenne. Um, this is a film about stray cats in Los Angeles. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. Thank you. 
I am Asia Kinney. I'm so excited to be a part of this festival. My film is Woman. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And really my film is just the journey and the study of black women, all of the beautiful, wonderful, complex emotions we have and the way we express those things. I hope you enjoy it. All right, you ready? I can't get on it. Picture. No, it's no picture. Oh, okay, come on. It's just yeah, recording. Ready, ready. You ready? Yeah. All right, one, yeah. oh. two, three. Ging gong gooly 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 washa. Ging gong goo. Ging gong goo. Ging gong gooly 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 washa. Ging gong goo. Ging gong goo. Hela. Hela shela. Hela shela. We sit above kitchen floors and with legs swinging, hot combs send sensations up our spine. You, my safe place. You, flesh of my flesh. Unflinching, bended head, we bow lowered face into the ground. Reverence to the comb that plucks pain from my scalp, but makes us women. She is making me pretty. As if the natural flow of my hair reminds her of some deep pain, too afraid to leave. She yanks and pulls me straight. This is what they call safe ground. I remember when you were little, full of wild dreams, standing tall, two feet together, and then that little voice, you would command the room. I was amazed by you. Like most mothers, I made you believe in the power of fantasy. Constructing wonder was my job, and I was certain that my efforts would far exceed the ones of my mother. Loving you was the experience I desired. And with every ounce, with every breath, I promised that you would always feel that love. You grew. Whenever possibilities lived, you would find it, drag it front and center, and give it life. Meaning, you were my reason. You gave wind to dry trees that in the cold found quietness. You were the sun. And I, I was expanding worlds to make it all happen. Tired back, weak feet, long days. Didn't mean anything. And you gave away the sun. You gave away that power. I couldn't dream for you anymore. Why did you stop dreaming? Why did you make me your only dream? You placed the entire world on my shoulders and that heaviness 
of expectation, curled my back, and my view never reached higher than the steps in front of me. Muzzle. I tried to breathe. I tried to be brighter because you needed it. But it was never enough. I tried to stand taller to give you meaning. I watched you, and it bred in anger in me. I couldn't be him. I couldn't validate your existence for you, and you put that weight on me. And you never saw me. Only a hopeful second version of yourself. Wrap me in your tenderness. Wrap me in your gentleness. For just one second, love me because I am your soul removed. You, mother, are my worst fear. That mean it was hers. What was it? What made me the lucky one to be scarred by what she called love? You need to talk to her. What's the point? I am the piece of herself she hated. No. Nah. When they ask, I say she made me strong. And I hate myself every time I speak those lies. She made me scared. Baby, I'm here. Saving grace, mother. Make me believe in you again. I am the piece of thread from the tapestry you are. I'm your daughter. Why can't you protect me? Am I your skin? Ashamed to see me as your creation? Even now, I need you. We run, we skip, unknowing. We pretend the floor is lava and joyful. We hop from one basement block to another. We create kingdoms and universes that we exist in until the street lights flicker on. Pebbles scattered on the concrete become the dots leading us home. We find comfort in the rain and stick out our tongues as far as they can go, tasting water from the sky. We were young. We were carefree. And our mothers made us believe we were careless. Told to be small, we grew. Told to stop, we ran. What damage have we become?
Uh, hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Kahn. Um, I'm a filmmaker and artist based in Los Angeles, but originally from the DMV. Um, this is my experimental, uh, very angsty, <laughs> pandemic short film that I made. Um, it's called Awaiting Death. Uh, big thank you to 4421 and the Kennedy Center for making this event possible. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much. When I inherit the earth, do I inherit all its pain and chaos? I hear noise. Oh, the noise. When does it stop? How nice would it be to live under one rule, one law, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty? and justice for all. <laughs> Peace is a serpent, slippery and slick. Its hold short-lived as it slides out of grass. Greatness comes at a cost. Victims scream, victors laugh. But isn't that the way it's always been? Wouldn't you fight for what you believe in? Even the deepest chasm started with a crack. An idea. Educate a man, and he makes his choice. Indoctrinate a man, and he makes your choice. What would happen if Sisyphus stopped rolling his rock? One can only go hungry for so long. Hi, I'm Jordan Plotner. And I'm Lindsay Ferguson. And we are Ned and Wendy. Here at our home in Los Angeles, California. What you're about to see is our real life musical love story. We hope you enjoy. craziest love story I've ever heard and I'm the one living in it <laughs> oh my god but 
I should start back at the beginning. So the first time I ever talked to Jordan was in December of 2019. I was having a particularly rough day. My head was in a, in a weird place. I had just moved back to LA after an 11 month stint in Connecticut, recovering from surgery on my spine and my skull after being diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, a rare genetic condition. Well, I had just been diagnosed with genital herpes. My relationship of five years would have just come to an end. About 20 minutes before I spoke to him for the first time, I broke up with the last guy that I was seeing. After the breakup phone call, I had another phone call scheduled with the producer that I was One of my good with. friends, Zach, yeah. from, from high school. And he reached out to me and said, there's this really great artist he's working with. And this phone call was going to also include Zach's friend, Jordan. A composer and a producer, went to Yale, brilliant. Would I be interested in writing some string parts? And I remember hearing the first song it was a feeling that I've never had listening to music before. It, it was kind of magical. Oh, they laugh and they leave, but they stay inside my dreams. I've been having trouble. This voice was some was something else. It was something more than just a human voice. It was it was otherworldly. I was just like, yes, fuck yes. You know, I want it to sound like a whirlpool or an ocean tide. <laughs> what kind of, like, bullshit response is that to give to someone? And just everything she said was profound and, and poetic. And he just got it. I was so excited. I remember getting off of the phone and not looking back. He had this smile that special something. took over his entire face. And then I started thinking about, like, oh, you know, I have a big smile, and if we took pictures together, our smiles would just be so big. <laughs> I had received some of his music back. I was giddy, I was laughing the whole time. I was so excited. Whoa, this is something. And my music had never sounded that good. I just loved working with Lindsay. He was just unlike anyone I had ever met. Best songwriter I'd ever, I'd ever met. And I actually hadn't met you yet. <laughs> At this point, I had no intention of even leaving New York. I didn't think I would ever meet this guy in person. COVID comes along. My body is just not in a great place. It kind of occurs to me again, you have genital herpes. He's gonna need to know this at some point if you're interested in him. I wasn't sure what to do, and then one day just felt inspired to write about now having an STD and also living in a pandemic. There was this other virus that was, you know, in a way controlling everybody's lives. Jordan read the essay and he reached out to me. He thought that the way that I shared it was brave and inspiring and that if I ever needed someone to talk to that he was there. He opened a door to a level of, of vulnerability and, and honesty with someone that I had not experienced. At this point I was in quarantine and I had no instruments. I started to get really antsy because I wanted to make music again. I thought, I bet Jordan could put some music to my lyrics if I, if I recorded myself singing a song. And he loved it, he loved it. And it, within a few days he, you know, added all of this beautiful music to it and sent it back to me and, and it just blew me away again. We kept making music. We got into this rhythm where I would go to bed. And I'd get really high and lie on the floor and get to a place where my pain was just gone. And I'd grab my guitar and I would just, I would just go. He would send it to me over a voice memo. Tons and tons of messages while you were sleeping. And I'd go to sleep. Then the next morning... I'd wake up, listen to it, write the lyrics to the songs, record them, add harmonies, add effects, and then send it back to him. I'd wake up the next morning and there'd be a song. There'd be the most beautiful song. And I would just be like, oh my god. <laughs> this is, wow. We had a streak of beats where it kept going and going. I think we probably wrote 
40 songs without ever having met. Of course we fell in love. <laughs> we started sending each other these voice memos back and forth to talk about our thoughts and our dreams, share music ideas, you know, mathematic theories. Okay, well, those were Jordans. I was not talking about that ever, but... <laughs> you changed the way I see life. I am most certainly falling in love. And as we now. had these these personal breakthroughs, our music was breaking through. When that started happening, um, that's when we started making some big decisions. <laughs> So in June, inspired by the Laurel Canyon docu-series, which talks all about the, the famous musicians who lived in the Laurel Canyon in the late 1960s and early 70s, you know, before they really got famous. And all this music came from their time just spent hanging out in each other's backyards and living rooms. Jordan texted me. I know that this is... Uh uncharacteristically impulsive and asked if I wanted to live with him in like a music bungalow where we could you know, just make music and we weren't even dating at the time <laughs> she said yes of, of course. course I'm going to say yes and then we we made it happen okay we are about to hit send on the Lowry Road application holy fucking shit holy fucking shit holy fucking shit not long after that, I received a journal in the mail from Jordan. And there was a little note in it that said, you know, we'll send it back and forth until, we're, until we live together. In one day. On July 31st, and a half. Just one. We got a house. Lindsay and I. We ended up going from I like like you to saying I love you. And we decided to start okay. dating, even though at this point we've never met. Good day, good day. <laughs> and since we've been here, it's been extraordinary, and it's been it's been tough. It wasn't all easy. There will always be the messiness of life, of living, of bodies, of hurting in the music we make and continues to grow with us. And now I know what it means to live as an artist. For the first time in my life, I'm truly happy. I believe this is the great love story of our lives. If we bought a house up in the hills, I don't think I'd believe my eyes when every morning I would step outside to watch the sun rise above the hills of Los Angeles A genius and I And all the thrills from all the frills That hundred dollar bills can buy Could float away if I could only stay To watch the sun rise above the hills of Los Angeles A genius and I
Good evening, my name is Maude Achempong. I lived in Maryland for a while, but I'm back in the Bronx where I was born, and I am a new media performance artist. Ampersand is one of my performance pieces uh, inspired by the metamorphosis that happens when we are in isolation and how terrifying and horrible it can be. I hope you enjoy. Was this not the apocalypse you had dreamed of? The one that you were waiting for? <laughs> Perhaps you thought we'd go by zombie? A plague? I hate to break it to you, but the apocalypse is here. Except the villains are your grandfathers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters, your friends. I thought you said you wanted to be the main character. Well, now's your time to shine. Or was this not the story you intended? The one you wanted written? Unfortunately, there is no plot armor here. One may call her womb a tombstone and have the nerve to give birth still. Mortar and pestle, iron and spit convinced the rocks in her belly are just birthing pains. That this too shall pass. That birth be full of hot men. Rather the babe still be born than no babe at all. I was born with half my tongue stapled to my chest. So I walk with a lisp, a stuttered gait, a lopsided doll face. Footsteps on my mahogany wear me out, wear me thin, make me a wood-templed woman, and I am not a woman. But even if I peeled back my skin, to reveal the porcelain white skeleton that lives inside of me. I think my pelvic bone would give me away. I would have moved the mountain on my chest, but the bones would be too smooth, too delicate, my frame not massive enough. They'd call me skeleton girl. And then I'd have failed my mission. Still, I hate eating. The bread and rice always go straight to my thighs. I wouldn't give a damn about the weight. 
if it would make me less woman to you. Now I've learned to look my body in the eye. I've stopped calling it beautiful. Body doesn't need to be beautiful, just working good enough. Instead, I say, you are mine. You are mine. You are mine. And the woman they call me is not. My name is Mike Ash, I'm from Washington, D.C. And a lot of my work is rooted in connecting past events and current events. And this new film that I made, Dance for Freedom, is definitely along the lines. What I was looking to do was to connect D.C. culture, specifically Gogo, with Native African culture, like before we even got to America. And I tried to take on that in a cool and fresh way. And this film was made. Hope you guys enjoy it. My ancestors couldn't live like me and you. Actually, they couldn't live at all. They couldn't sing and dance freely. They didn't have choices like we do. I'm Native American and Black. I'm a part of both America's starting point. My ancestors were and conquered, forced to live with people that cared nothing about them. They were forced to do all types of stuff they didn't want to to stay alive. America tried hard to erase the Africans from African Americans. They were just jealous of how beautiful we were. But this ain't a tragedy, more of a triumph tale, because they didn't cross the finish line. The slaves gathered around the fire. They danced and sung and ate. For a tiny moment in time, they didn't have to think about their reality. I dance today the same reason as our ancestors. I feel them going through me when I move. I dance, because when I do, nothing else matters but me. I dance to escape the reality of the dead. I dance to escape the reality of the dead. I dance to escape the reality of the dead. I dance for freedom. For freedom. Yo, what's going on everybody? I go by Skinny Trail and I want to give a huge honor and thank you to 4421 for even giving me the opportunity to display my art in front of you all. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. And just a quick little insight on my film. I played off the word manifestation in my own little weird way to take you through twists and turns and you have to go watch the first video, Bloom, to piece the whole story together. Go get the album. Again, I'm Skinny Trill. I'll see y'all later.
smoothie in the morning So my nut can taste the finest I'm considering an out of things you eat, girl, let's be honest Mom, investigation is now underway into a fiery car accident that took place late last night in Detroit's west side. We're being told that the icy road conditions pulled one of the vehicles into the wrong lane and directly into oncoming traffic. Investigators say that speed may have been a factor in the accident as well. Witnesses say both vehicles were empty, excluding the drivers, and that one of which could be local artist Brandon Thompson, also known by the moniker Skinny Trout. No word on his condition as of yet, but we are keeping him along with the other driver and his family in mind. Evergreen is currently closed in both directions, so don't let that affect your morning commute. Speaking of those icy road conditions, let's take it to Jay for this week's weather. How about it, Jay? Like a bomb, I think she wanna. Burn. 
What's up, y'all? It's that voice again. The one that gives you all the announcements. No, I'm not there. So stop looking around. And yes, I do look just as good as I sound. Now, without any further ado, the moment we've all been waiting for. The damn moment of truth. The winner of this year's Emerging Young Voices Film Festival, brought to you by 4421, is... Drum roll, please. The winner is Cayenne by Ashton Kelman Holmes. <laughs> 